Welcome to the Multifamily Zone, where business meets family. We explore what the entrepreneur life looks like from the family perspective. Now here are your hosts, Julia and Gino Barbaro. Hey everyone, this is Julia Barbaro, host of the Multifamily Zone podcast. I'm here with the co-founder of Jake and Gino, my husband and co-host, Gino Barbaro. Gino. Hi, Julia. Hey. <laughs> what are we talking about today? So, I, you know, it's, it's, it's that time, I think, where I, I get a little overwhelmed with taking on too many tasks, too many chores, too many responsibilities. Um, and there's a time when I have to kind of reevaluate my priorities. So what are we talking about? <laughs> that. And I know a lot of people out there are like, yes, I'm doing that too. And so, you know, maybe this is a good time for everyone to just sit back and say, okay, let me make a list of my priorities of what's important right now. Um, you know, there are things that we see as important, more important than other things. Um, and we maybe make a list, right? Create an action plan, create something where that top priority is on the top of the list and we're making sure that we're following that first. So do I have permission to talk about business on this podcast? Well, yeah, I was going to talk about business because, because you're actually part of this <laughs> because you have some really amazing ideas. And unfortunately, I have the ideas too. And I mistakenly at times mention them to you. And all of a sudden, I have this new task. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it happens so often. I'm a great leader. I'm not leader. blaming. I'm not blaming. I'm just Leaders putting it listen out there. and they delegate, right? <laughs> I'm a great leader, okay? And I'm getting better and better. So that's my job, right? My job is to listen. And I always say, hey, Julia, what do you think about that? What's your thought? And Julia's like, hmm, I think we should do this. And I encourage and I'm like, that is great. Let's do that. And then she looks at me all befuddled that I just did the Jedi mind trick and I got her doing something else. So, and we, it's, we it's, do, I think we both do it to each other, yes. you know, which is good. And I think it's a good compliment. Um, but I do, I really think that both of us have that issue where we do take on a lot and we get burnt out. And that's where I am right now. I feel like I'm burnt out and I have to reevaluate. So I was at a quarterly meeting this past week with the Jake and Gino team. I flew up to Knoxville and my quote for the week was commit and don't give a, you can fill it out. Don't worry about what happens. Mm -hmm. I think most of us get paralyzed by, you know, Another quote that I, that I came up with this week and I was doing a podcast with somebody and I love it. Done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. Just remember that. Live by that motto. Nothing has to be perfect in life because if you wait till something's perfect, there's always something wrong. Yeah. You're never done. We're working on a customer journey, a customer experience with our Jake and Gino community. I want to deliver massive customer service. It's never done. There's always re you're always refining it. You're always learning. You're always getting better. And if it is done, that means you stop growing mm -hmm. because you can always learn. The person that you were when you were 20 years old is not the person you are when you're 30 or when you're 50. So it's as you get older, you may be overwhelmed. And people say to me, I can't believe you do so much. It's not that I'm doing so much now. I, I'm just learning that it doesn't have to be perfect. Other people can actually help me out while I'm doing it. I'm mm -hmm. not the only one doing it also. And I prioritize. And I think this is what this podcast is going to be about, teaching you how to prioritize in your life. Um, teaching you what to focus on for your life, what works for you, and then end up just saying to yourself, I want to commit and I'm going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to commit and I'm not going to give a, you know what I mean? So it's really important that you're out there when this podcast is over, commit to those priorities. And it's okay if you get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and it's okay if you don't finish your priorities. We call it the parking lot. Put it in your parking lot. Put it there for the next quarter. But what makes people super successful from the ones that are those that are less successful is the people who are super successful prioritize things that are going to move the needle for their business or for their family. For us, in, in, in for example, I want to do something that's revenue generating, that's going to generate revenue. Those are my tasks that I need to work on. And I don't want to do tasks that make me seem as if I'm busy, busy being, I'm doing that busy work. That doesn't move the needle for the business. It may make me feel good. And I can give you a perfect example. And I always go back to the restaurant days because it was just where I was in my life. I wasn't ready. I'm back in the kitchen again, everybody. It's 90 degrees outside. I'm washing dishes. Now that's not moving the needle for the business. That's doing low 
level work where I can pay somebody $12 an hour to do it. But in my mind back then, I'm busy, I'm doing work, I'm getting stuff accomplished, but I'm not out in the front talking to potential investors, talking to potential customers who want to book a catering party, just enjoying myself and, and growing the brand that way or doing a Facebook post on Instagram with the dish coming out. I'm not doing that. So for me, Back in the day, I wasn't prioritizing my tasks. I was just winging it every day. I didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. It's funny because what I was just thinking before you said that was me doing dishes too. So it was kind of funny how <laughs> we have such similar, life. well, we used to have similar Well, lives. you're not getting paid. I'm not getting paid dishes, though. Right? Come on. What is this? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. The day. I'm just joking. Everyone, August 30th, 1998. I want you had to, to think about that. Down. That was really cute. Yeah. You know why? Because it's really funny. <laughs> August 31st, which my dad passed away. So August 30th, 1998, that's the day that my wife became financially free, everybody. Mm -hmm. Important day in my wife's so life. So are you saying that I'm the smarter one? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, yes. I never said you weren't. So, but it's, it's important when, you, when you're out there really to start prioritizing. You know, I don't want to get off the topic because it's, it's yeah. important. You know, the, the one thing by Gary Keller, it was an awesome book because you're always working towards that one thing. What is that one thing that you want in your relationship? Mm -hmm. What is that one thing you want for your family? What's that one thing that you want for your health? I'll give you a perfect example. Well, let me finish my story about dishes. Before okay. I, I apologize for cutting you off. Okay. Um, so I, I, just like Gino, with he has the company, he has other people working with him, and his priorities you know, are what they are, and he can also send a task over to someone else. You know, we could do that at home. And I, and I want to be clear, even the smallest of kids can do little chores here and there to keep them busy, to teach them how to help in the household because it's so important. And just the other day, you know, it was Sunday, everyone was home. And it's one of those things where, you know, I always assumed that the kids were always going to be home and little by little, they kept going and doing things. And so when I have the kids all home together, it's, I'm just so grateful and I love the moment and I just want to, you know, I just wanted it to last and I love it. And so I was kind of doing everything by myself so that the kids would all hang out together. And there I was doing the dishes and one by one, the kids kept saying, mom, mom, can you help me with, you know, whatever. There's one of them's doing the hair. And I felt so overwhelmed because I was trying to do everything at once. And I stopped for a minute and I said, I'm not going to get overwhelmed. And I called out, hey, can everyone just give me 10 minutes to clean up? And everyone got up, they did it and everything was done. And so that was me at the moment. I could have just sat there and done it and been overwhelmed, burnt out, irritated, or I could just ask. And that's what you do in your job. And I appreciate that because I see it. I learned from that. Wow. Yeah. She learned from me. I that's do. pretty good. See, leaders teach. Uh, the, the <laughs> or it goes both ways. I mean, maybe you learned from me. I don't know. <laughs> I think one of the things with, with priorities, and I've got this written down. I want everyone to write this word down. It's one of the hardest things that I had to go through in life. It's, it's boundaries. I think you have to set boundaries also with saying no to people, saying no to things. Because when you're saying yes to something, it means you're saying no to something mm -hmm. else. So if you're prioritizing and you're trying to get your stuff done, don't deviate from those priorities. I get a lot of emails from some very high level people that just say no to me when I ask them to come on our podcast. And I can totally respect that. Now, five years ago, I'd be like, ah, oh, jerk, why can't mm -hmm. she come on? Mm -hmm. Or why can't he come on? And now I realize they have amazing focus where they're getting a book done. They're on a, they're on a book tour themselves or they're creating content or they're launching a new program or they're working on their skills and they say no. Cause if they say yes to me, then they're saying no to their dreams. Mm -hmm. So when you're figuring out your priorities, think about this. Are you building your dreams when you're setting your priorities? If you're not, then that really shouldn't be a priority think about that. Yeah. And same at home. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent on that. When we want to, we want to help everyone we know, right. You know, we want to, you know, being a coach, I could, I could, I could help a lot of people out there if I really wanted to, but every hour I spend with someone else on the, on the zoom right now, you know, that's an hour away from my family. It's an hour away from me cooking lunch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's, it's really stressful because I want to help. I have a desire to help people. But at the same time, I know what my priorities are. And so it's like a balancing act. And it's like, you know, I have to do only what I can with others and, and remember that my priority is home, my priority are my children and my husband. Um, and then after that, when my husband asked for something for his job, <laughs> for the Jake and Gino community, it's really hard to say no to him. <laughs> but, 
I just have to do it because <laughs> she never says no. I just to me. have to, you know. <laughs> but she I never just, says no to me. Julia. So, yeah. Can we edit these videos? <laughs> sure, Julia. We need to do a podcast tomorrow. Yes, I'll do it. Julia, I need to do videos. Can you edit these videos for me? Yes. It's just the way because you ask. you're my priority, and so unfortunately, your job and you mingle together, and you're the same. So it's kind of hard to. You know, I'm happy to do it. Hey, but you chose financial freedom I back did. in 1998. It was so my choice. There comes some consequences. That's with the right. Financial freedom, so it's right? catching up to me. I feel like <laughs> it's catching up to me. Well, you're getting more skillful, right? That's There's true. more skills, yeah. right? I want to go back to this um, this quarterly priorities that we've got going on. I, if you're in a business right now, what I would recommend you doing is I've talked about this on a lot of podcasts, but create your mission statement, create your core values, and from there. You can be a one-person shop. You can be a 30-person shop. You really need to start creating quarterly priorities. We, we've been doing that. We've been doing weekly, weekly uh, level 10 meetings, we call them. We get on a call once a week with each team member or each group. Then we get on daily huddles in the morning just to find out, to check in every morning. It's all over communication. And from all these communications and all of what's going on, you create quarterly priorities. A task is less than eight hours. So a task is like, Julia, can you edit these five videos and put them on our learning management system? That's a task because that can be done quickly. A priority is like, Julia, can we overhaul the website, put new tabs, new calls to action? I want some more videos on there. That's more of a priority. That's more high level. That's more encompassing, more hours. What I want you to do on your first quarterly meeting when you do your priorities, don't put too many priorities on there put ones that you think are really going to move the needle quarterly priorities that I just had in my previous quarter that are bleeding over into this one. Cause COVID stopped it. I couldn't go off to Knoxville to shoot videos. I'm creating the youth Academy and is there's a compilation of over 70 videos in there with assessments. So I'm not beating myself over that because I didn't finish it in last quarter, but it's bled over into this quarter. And now this quarter, another one of my big priorities is to try to get a lot of reviews for the Jake and Gino community and to build a system for that. So that's another priority for, for me right there. And another priority, priority for me is to generate revenue, additional revenue sources. So that is really trying to sell websites to the Jake and Gino community. I'm trying to sell micro courses. I'm selling that youth Academy. Uh, I'm doing some type of YouTube ad revenue. All that That's more of a priority because it's more high level thinking and that's going to move the needle. It's going to move the brand. So I challenge everybody out there, sit down, take a little bit of time, start with these weekly meetings and start building up your quarterly priority. Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And then Q3, right now we're in, whatever you don't get done by quarter three gets done at the quarter four. And you make them a priority. You want them to get done. And don't be afraid to say no to some opportunities because if you say no to some opportunities, you're saying yes to your priorities. It, it, every time we, we do this, you know, we talk together, it's so interesting how family life and business life are so similar. You know, everything you said, we could do at home, we could do if we're raising our family. And I encourage everyone, you know, sit with your spouse or, you know, whoever and, and really come up with a plan because when our business gets out of control and we're, we have no control of what's going on, it, you know, like you said, it's not going to succeed. Same with our family life. When it gets, when it spirals out of control, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be successful. We really have to take, take control of it. Just like Gino said, when he was talking about the business, do the same thing he just said with your family at home. All of the things he just said, except for the last one with the revenue, <laughs> you can do it. Well, maybe you got kids that push unless, them to make some revenue. Unless for us, you're right? me and I'm <laughs> doing some extra work. No, but it's a really important because it's, it's all about, you know, balancing what is important um, and, and just getting a, a handle on what, what, you know, what should be done first. Take care of that and then go to the next one. Have a, have, have a plan, have a plan right in front of you so you can check it off, you know, done, have a map, have your tasks written, cross them up, who can do them, maybe you're, you know, you're overwhelmed with something, somebody can help you, you can hire out, you can get takeout a couple of days a week if you have to, you know, there's so many op options nowadays, the grocery delivers, the grocery stores, they all deliver now. Um, so get somebody that's really good with organizing your house, have them come in and give you a hand. There's so many things that you could do to reassess and see what's important, what we have to take care of today. Now, my wife mentioned the word balance, and that word balance really frustrates me sometimes because it's nearly impossible to have balance in your life. Sometimes you're gonna have to work harder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're gonna be home a little bit more. Yep. Maybe this pandemic has pushed you to stay home and you have to reprioritize or do whatever. I'll give you an example. This past Thursday, I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning, 
got on a plane, had to fly to Knoxville, didn't see the family Thursday, stayed there Friday, got home Friday midnight. There's no balance there. I didn't see the family for two days. Saturday morning, I got up. Josh had me do a coaching call in the morning. Most people would say, I don't work on the weekends, mm -hmm. but we're people first. That's our core value. I, I couldn't do it on Friday because it was, was with quarterly meetings. So my wife could say to me, why are you working Saturday? You need to spend time with the kids. Well, you know what? After that call, the rest of the day was with the family. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday was Father's Day. We spent the whole day Sunday. So I don't want people out there trying to go so man maniacal that I need to balance my life. I need to work this much and spend time. Just let it be natural. Because mm -hmm. then when it's forced, you're not even going to enjoy it because then you're going to be thinking to yourself, I need to be working. And then when you're working, you're going to be like, I need to be with the kids. Mm -hmm. Focus on whatever task you're doing at hand. When I'm, coming, when I'm done with this podcast, I'm going to be done with it, shut my computer off, and I'm going bike riding with my two uh, younger kids. We're going to go down the street, and then we're going to come back. We're going to go maybe Taco Libre and because Cecilia keeps trying to sell me. And she's always pushing a needle. We can't just go bike riding. We have to go, so, go somewhere. I don't want to go to Starbucks and get a crappy uh, sugary drink. Maybe we're going to go to Taco Libre to get some tacos. But the point is, just enjoy everything you're doing and try to focus. And another thing with priorities and with getting stuff done and boundaries shut off the devices i'm telling you it'll be the best thing you ever did time block mm -hmm. shut off instagram shut off facebook for an hour see how that goes just clear your mind close your browser get rid of your emails and 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 you will see how much you'll get done and with your priorities when your strongest is usually in the morning get some work done in the morning by the end of the day you'll have decision fatigue you won't have the muscle to do it so i would encourage you to start a habit where in the morning Get some of that work done. Get some of that stuff when you're fresh. Do the trainings in the morning. Do the videos. Do the learnings in the morning. If you're writing a book, write a book. Whatever you feel fresh. Because as the day expires and goes on longer, you're going to feel much more tired. You're not going to feel like you want to do it. You're going to need the willpower to do it. Don't need the will, don't need the willpower. Schedule it to get it done first thing in the morning. Yeah, it sounds like you 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 were talking about just be present, right? Be present in what you're doing at the time. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us miss out on a lot when we're you know when we're hanging with the kids. And we're thinking about work and, and vice versa. And, that, and that's something that, you know, I, I know for that for a fact, and I know I've talked to a lot of the parents out there that feel the same way that, you know, just be, just be present at the moment. Even if you're with your spouse or you're on a walk, don't think about dinner because you can't do anything right then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Unless you could solve a problem in your mind. But be present at the moment. And so we talk about balance. Strive for balance but don't, don't let it come naturally. Just like Gino said, I think that was really well said. So the other word I want you to all write down is multitasking. That is a misnomer. Most, some people can do things, a couple things at a time really well. That's really a fallacy. You, you really want to focus on one. I can do a lot of things, but I can tell you if I'm watching TV and my wife taps me on the shoulder and wants to talk to me, I cannot listen to her and watch the TV. I cannot be fully present listening to her. I really have to shut the TV off and watch her. I can't multitask. And that's just, that, that's no, the, I agree that's with the you. reality. Some people can do it better than that though. And I, and I, I, I cannot do things a hundred percent each. Like I can't, obviously I could do more things at once than you, like but what? like I can have a conversation and cook at okay. the same time. When you do that, you actually have to stop what you're doing. It's very interesting how that works. But maybe I'm not putting my 100% in at cooking. Maybe my food is better than yours, baby. Yeah, we'll we we'll have cooking. a competition. We, I think we're going to do that. Yeah, because yeah, you just get me to cook. I don't want to. This I is a good idea. You win. You win. <laughs> but my point is, honestly, a lot of people out there yeah. think like this. That's what it is. You think you're busy, busy, busy and doing a couple of things. Focus on what you're doing. Yeah. If you're writing an article, put the effort into writing the article. If you're on a coaching call, if you're listening to a webinar or a recording or training, true. listen yeah. to it. Don't be opening up three different browsers because you're wasting your time. You're getting nothing done. That's the problem. That goes back basically to just basic awareness, right? Because mm -hmm. when someone's talking or when you're actually doing something and you're thinking about something else, you, you know, it's exactly what we're going to do a podcast on in the future is we, we had it on awareness, but I want to get deeper into it. It's really interesting when you, when you pay attention to your thoughts and what, what happens and what changes when you're more aware of them. It's amazing how we're losing that skill mm -hmm. is just to be present and just to be quiet and mm -hmm. really to journal. And if you're not a big journaler, just sit down and ponder about what you want to do. And I'm going to bring it back to business to move the needle with business. Because I, well, move I, the needle I, with the family yeah, too, I because feel, you want them to succeed. Yes. You want them to have a good education, be polite be good people. And that's on us as parents. So it's the same thing. Yes. But I'm saying like for, for me to create a new project or, or to do something different, 
it's not going to happen in a vacuum. I really need to sit down and to really plan and to really think about it and to always say, wow, what's, what can we do for next quarter? Let's plan for next quarter. Let's not it happen. Let's not it happen to us. And I've said it in a lot of podcasts, proper planning yeah, prevents I you. I don't know. poor performance. Okay. So you have to properly yeah. plan. You know, it's funny because it's summertime and I've already thought about the fall with school and what we're going to learn <laughs> and all that. And I get overwhelmed because I'm like, that's in many months. I have to be patient and wait. But the same thing, I have to plan it or it's not going to happen, right? It's the same thing. Let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsors. Gino, I know a lot of our listeners are wanting to take their multifamily investing business to the next level. I know that you've been hard at work helping Jake and Gino students do just that using our framework. Can you explain to the listeners how they can get our help? Guys, we've been hard at work growing our community of like-minded investors and the results of our members has been nothing short of incredible. We're looking to grow this amazing group. What we're looking for is those who want to follow our proprietary framework that we've created. Buy right, manage right, and finance right. Leverage our connections, education, and mentorship as ways to take your business to the next level. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become a part of our amazing community, apply to work with us at jakeandgino.com forward slash apply. So Gina, let's give everyone an action plan out there, you know, about the priorities. Let's just take a few minutes. If it's, you want to sit with your family, you want to sit with your, your company you work with, your partners that you work with. Um, what are your priorities? Let's write them down. Let's get them out. Let's put them on a piece of paper. Um, let's agree on them because that's important, especially if it's Gino and I talking about our family priorities that we, you know, we should agree on them um, and then create an action plan. It's really important that you decide what way you're, you're, that you're going to go with it, right? Because if, if both of you aren't on board or if you have a, a business partner, they're both not on board, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Um, go ahead. Number one mm -hmm. is create an action plan. And how do you do that? Some people utilize coaches, consultants to help them out in their business because they're detached. They have no, there's, they have no judgment in there. So they're listening to you and you not only have the answers, but you may be scared of going after that big, big task, or that big priority to move the needle. Who am I to go speak in front of a stage, right? You may, that may, should be a priority of a lot of people, but they're like, I can't do that. So maybe talking it out, like Julia said, setting that as a priority, then that's the priority. What are the goals or the tasks that you need to do that? For me, the priority would be, let's say if I'm going to speak on stage, I want to get better. How do I do that? Well, I need to do more training. I need to learn my content. I need to create content. So all those tasks that I need to do to hit that priority. That's what you do, you're creating that action plan. Yeah, and then the second one would be designate specific time slots for the tasks because if we don't, then we're not gonna get them done. They're just gonna be on the calendar or wherever or just a, a, you know, in a list somewhere in your office or on your table or wherever. Put an actual time on there, when you're gonna do it, what day you're gonna do it. Put the time down because, because then when the time comes, you're gonna actually do that task. Okay. I would actually go one step further. Mm -hmm. I would say, by Friday, Julia, Friday, we got a podcast scheduled at 10 a.m. in the morning. I'd write it down in the calendar. I would also write it on my piece of paper to get it done because when you write something in subconscious, it actually gets activates. And also when you speak it out loud and you say it out loud, it also locks it in that you're also committing yourself. You know, Robert Cialdini talks about the, uh, the weapons of influence and commitment and consistency is up there. So if you commit to something and you write it down, you normally tend to be consistent with those actions. So if you say, and you announce it to the world, I'm out there, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. If you say it to yourself, mm -hmm. hmm. but if you say it to people, and like my wife, she wants to, make, she wants to compete about cooking right now, and she's put it out there, <laughs> well, and I hold it to that, all of a sudden, oh, now, now she's backing off because she knows. It's huh? really about having you cook. <laughs> I think that's saying. what it is. I just want to win. So. <laughs> I know you do. But commit me consistency. See, I would feel bad and just let you win. No, she would yeah, not. Would. People, would she would not feel win. bad. No, she would not feel bad. No. <laughs> Number yeah, two, like Julia right, said, yeah. is designate specific time slots for tasks. Yeah. If you don't schedule it, you don't plan it out, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. The next one is determine how you want to live your life. And this is important because if I'm an unorganized person, messy person, always late, 
that type of person, that's on me. If I don't want to be like that, I can actually decide to change. This, is where, so important. this is where you need to get a life coach, though, because what is well, making... Well, that's my next one. Talk oh, to a mentor. Dude, Hold okay. on a second. Ooh, I'm jumping, on jumping on the gun. <laughs> but that's important, right? Yes. To determine how you want to live your life. You have to understand yourself. This is where you have to be aware. And this is hard because you really have to judge yourself. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hard to rip it down and say, man, I am, I am a pig. Why am I living like that? Why, why am I letting people down all the time? Why am I always late? Yeah. Why am I always not living up to what I said I was going to do? Mm-hmm. And it's ultimately about responsibility. Mm-hmm. About, I will tell you this. The people who are the most successful in life are the ones who are most responsible and take responsibility for their successes as well as their failures. Mm-hmm. And they learn from them and they grow from them. Right. Yeah. The next one is talk to a mentor. Talk to a coach. Talk to someone that you respect in whatever part of life you're trying to grow in because they're the ones that are going to give you the good advice. Maybe those are the people that are going to hold you accountable because maybe you're going to go back to them and say, Hey, look at, look what I did. You know, can you give me more advice? It's so important to have someone in your life that will cheer you on, encourage you instead of bring you down. So that was the fourth one. Yeah. Talk to a mentor. I would go one step further, invest in a mentor because years ago I did not have the results that I have now. And what were those things that I did over the last four or five years that have changed and have gotten these massive results? Really not that many. I invested in my education. I invested in a coach because I wanted to be held accountable because I couldn't do it by myself and I didn't know what I didn't know. So it was really important that I invested in a mentor. Mm -hmm. The next one for me was map out, number five, map out your daily tasks. And this, you know, it it sounds silly Mm -hmm. to some of us, but you know, if I'm overwhelmed with the laundry, with the dishes, with the cooking and all that stuff, you know, we have a lot of people in the house if I map it out and maybe schedule it, I'll get used to that schedule. It doesn't have to be like long term, but it could it could put you on the right path. It could put you on the right path for organization um, and not getting overwhelmed because sometimes we're overwhelmed because we think about all the things that we have to do and just the thought of them, you know, we kind of move away from doing them. So the laundry piles up. You know, maybe we go out way too many times for dinner because we just didn't feel like cooking. So it's important to just map out your daily tasks and look over them because once they're out of your mind, they're not as overwhelming. Even though you have to do the work, of course, but for some reason, when they're stuck in our mind, it's more overwhelming. So this is one of those tasks where you can do a, a reverse engineering. If I said to Julia, what does a really successful and great year look like to you? Plan out a year from now what that looks like. A year from now... I weigh 120 pounds, my kids are in college, I've been on a vacation, and I can't say financially free because she me? already is. is. That, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just, just, I'm 117, just to be clear. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm just, not sure where you're going I'm with just, this. I'm just throwing numbers out. I'm just saying. And then reverse engineer that. <laughs> yeah. Go by the quarters. What do you have to do every quarter? And then you can get granular to what do I need to do daily. So for me, in the real estate space with multifamily, I, by the end of the year, right, what do I want to do by the end of the year? I want to close a deal by the end of the year. So I have 365 days. So let's drill that down. We know on average, you need to look at 80 and 100 deals to close a deal in multifamily real estate. That's what it is. Bill Ham likes to say the race to 80. So how does that work? If you have 50 weeks in a year and you need to look at 80 deals, that's about two deals a week. You need to underwrite and start putting in offers. So reverse engineer, my daily tasks, I need to call brokers. I need to analyze deals and I have to put letters of intent and you have that set of plans. So mapping out your daily tasks, you can reverse engineer it from what it, what it looks like a year from now and let's start breaking it down. And that's how the quarterly priorities come in. Mm-hmm. Quarterly priorities when you're first starting out multifamily real estate is selecting a market. That's the first quarterly priority. And then from there, start working on relationships. And then from there, start learning how to underwrite deals. And then from there, start putting in offers. So as you can see, at, when you're first beginning, the quarterly priorities are a little bit different than when you're have been doing this for a little while. Those quarterly priorities may be just on the right deals and just figure it out. So then you'll know what your daily tasks are. That's good advice. I like Thank that. You. Yeah. You gonna do it? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next number six. That's is, me holding my breath, everybody. <laughs> number six is eliminate eliminate distractions, and this is so important because we waste so much time, and I and I see it all the time, and I can't, it drives me crazy because I do it too. You know, the phone is, is in our hand half the day for no reason. We check it for no reason. No one texted us. No one called us, but we have to check it anyway. It's a security blanket. It kills me. It ruins relationships. I've seen it. And I, and I just, you know, we have to take control of that. So if, if anyone like me is out there that is on the phone too much, that it's, take, you know, it's taking away from my, my responsibilities, from my priorities, let's decide to 
limit it, eliminate them if we have to, because put them away. If nobody's calling us, what do you need the phone for? You don't have to scroll through Facebook and all the other things. Um, even the TV is a distraction. Sometimes we do need that time out with, you know, we, I know me and my husband and the kids watch a show at nighttime together. It's, it's a lot of fun, but we choose one show, maybe two, <laughs> if we're having a good night, but, you know, limit it. And that's important. Don't just keep it on all day because it's very distracting. It's distracting to the kids, you know, and I watch the kids when, the, when school is over, the TV goes on and guess what happens? Their imagination doesn't come out. And all of a sudden they're just, you know, there's, you could watch any show. Disney plus has every Disney movie out there and they could just binge watch. We could do the same thing. And what happens is their creativity is, is neglected and, and they don't, you know, it's, I love when the kids are bored because I love when they come to me and say that they're bored, can we watch a show? Because that's when they're gonna do something that they've never done before. Mm -hmm. They're gonna use their imagination. So I encourage that. Number seven is take time to reflect and reassess. I'm just having my quarterly um, assessments with all the team members and it's really amazing. I was doing one this afternoon with Jen. Jen, big shout out. What we've done in this last quarter, it was mind boggling as far as all the work we did. You know, congratulate yourself. It's amazing. Assess what you've done, whether we've done a, a dashboard, we've worked on the website, we've done a customer journey for our, for our uh, students who come on board. We've hired the success specialist, my brother. We've onboarded him. I mean, there's so many things that we've done in this quarter, and you really have to reflect upon it and say, this was great. We need to do more of this. I think we spent too much time on this. And you want to reassess what happened in this past quarter and what you can do better, but also not only what you can do better, but what were your successes? Because that's going to really inspire you and motivate you to go through the next quarter. And that was one of my big challenges or big mistakes early on. I would always think, man, the goal is just to get through the quarter. And when mm -hmm. I'm done, it, everything's gonna be great. But then I get to the quarter and I've got a hundred units and I'm like, okay, I hit that goal. What's next? Mm -hmm. And you know, the whole idea with goals, everybody once again is not to hit the goal, but to become the person you need to be to hit the goal. Because then when you hit the goal, you're going you're gonna to set another goal for yourself. And then you have to grow to hit that goal. So it's not about the goal itself. It's not about the result. It's about the person that you need to become. And if you can't re reflect and reassess what you've done, then you're not going to enjoy what you're doing. And you're not going to stay, I guess, uh, committed. And you're not going to stay motivated or inspired mm -hmm. to continue to reach for those goals. Yeah. You know, and as we grow, right, our life changes. Uh, what is important to us also changes. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids change. So we do need to reassess every once in a while. Maybe, you know, maybe more often when the kids are real little because they change so quickly. Um, but, but what's important does change over time. And that's why we have to reassess because sometimes we're so stuck in the way that we always did it because this is what I'm used to. Um, but it's not working anymore and we get frustrated. And that's sometimes why we, we get to the point where we're just so burnt out because it's not working anymore. So at that moment, it's like, okay, what's not working? Let me change it. Let me reassess. Let me change it and see if it works. And if it works, let me keep it. And it's really important that we are open to that change. So Julie, just to recap this and just to like try to finish the thought on this whole podcast, I think the most important thing is if you're feeling burned out, it's Okay. Take a step back, assess what you're doing, and maybe take a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe being burned out during this COVID with this media merry-go-round we have going on, people are getting burned out from that. And I had just had done a podcast recording with Tom Wheelwright, one of the Rich Dad Advisors, a few hours ago. And he said to me, and I thought it was pretty ironic because it was the same thing with us. I hear people that were not busy during this time. I heard people that had nothing to do. And he's like, this is the busiest I've ever been. Mm -hmm. And Jake and I totally agreed with him because when there's problems, there's opportunities, but we need to over communicate. We need to talk to our team and we have so many new things that are coming on board that we're learning. So for, for you being out there, if you're burned out, you feel that way, you need to step off and you need to step back and just take some time off to reflect because if not, that's when you get burned out. Yeah. When you're looking for that balance in life, it's not going to come. It'll come naturally. When you get better at stuff, and, and the other thing, when you're working towards your sole purpose and when you're working towards abundance, it's a lot easier and you will not get burned out. Because ironically enough, people who are poor or who don't have money, what do they focus on? They only focus on money. People who are financially free or who are just financially set, that's not their main focus. My main focus breaking up nowadays is not how much money I'm going to make today. It's how many people I can serve mm -hmm. and how many people I can help. You know, and sometimes too, when we, when we feel that burnt out, 
we're overwhelmed. It, it's also a sign that we've grown. And I think that's important to remember is, you know, it's, it's a good thing because now we're, we, we're, it's almost like we're taking that next step in life. You know, even if it's a small step in your family life or whatever, the business, it's another step. It's, you're going to better yourself. You're going to learn more. Mm -hmm. You're going to get further in life. So look at it as a positive. You know, we always, we always try to, to take all those negative things and, and change them to positive, but it is a moment. It was like, okay, I'm burnt out. What am I going to change in life? And that's mm -hmm. a really nice thing. And I always want people to focus on, we say this to Jake and Gino, people with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. And that'll make you less burned out if you're not worrying about next week's paycheck. That'll make you less burned out if you have money set aside. That'll make you less burned out if all you're focusing on is, I need to get paid for this job. Whereas, you know what? I can jump on this phone call and I can help this person out and not worry about getting paid. And I'll get paid sometime in the future. I'm not worried about that. So I want everyone to write that down. People with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. That's awesome. <laughs> We're going to go cook now? So I think that's it. I think we're going to have a cook-off. <laughs> <I think. laughs> well, you should tell everyone the story. We're going to have it live, Let, even. Let's tell the story on Facebook, right? What, what's the story with the husband cooking and the wife's getting everything prepared and I just throw it Oh, there's the a great one. It was a, it was a husband said, don't worry about dinner tonight. I, you know, I'm going to barbecue. All you have to do is get the ingredients, uh, prepare it on the pan, make a little side vegetables, maybe a little potatoes, and just, you know, and I'll grill. So you can just <laughs> relax tonight. And I laughed and laughed because that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so typical. Priorities. Yeah, we got to so prioritize. Funny. I do the meat. And you know what? By the way, when I do the meat, it is really good. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so. We should have a cook-off. I think we should make it live too. <laughs> Everyone, we just want to thank you for being part of the Jake and Gino family and for spending some time with us today. And if you have any questions as usual, hit up my wife. I'm saying I'm setting the priority. I'm sending yeah. it over to her. I love hearing from you. And I, and I, and I really do love your questions. So please, please, please send me. Um, an email, just let me know what you think of the podcast. Um, any of your advice, I'd love to hear what you think. And any questions or topics that you want us to talk about, I really appreciate that. Okay, so it's funny. See, the leader has to give out the email because she didn't give you her email, you gave did she? It. No, I didn't. Everybody you, knows it. Julia Barbaro <laughs> at gmail.com. Send I'm pretty them sure over. that you gave it. In the give her a lot of work. <laughs> give her a lot of tasks so we can create priorities. Don't overwork tasks. me though. Yes. Because then the more I work for you, the less I work for the family. Oh, no, no. Don't worry about it. I'll take yeah. some of the, I'll <laughs> take some of the priorities. So we want to thank everybody <laughs> Thanks, for being everyone. on. Have a great day.